Let's get our song books, please. Turn to 349. We ask you to stand and sing with the choir, The Comforter Has Come. 349. <laughs> good singing this morning. We're glad you're here. We're going to the Lord in prayer. At this time, Brother Carlos Phillips is making his way to pray for us, so let's pray together. Our Father, we're thankful this morning for your love and your blessings, for that precious time, Father, that we bow on our knees and ask Jesus to save us. We yes. give praise to you this yes. morning. Father, we pray if there's one here this morning that don't know you. Lord, that this be the time and the place and the opportunity that they have. And God, we pray for a pastor this morning, Lord, as he stands to break the bread of life. God, that you give him freedom this morning to speak. And Lord, for the forthcoming service to God, we pray that your blessings would be upon him. If there's one here again, Lord, that needs to rededicate their life and turn their heart and life to thee, we pray that this be the change. And Father, we ask for the ministers of Mount Pisgah. God, they're precious in our heart. Lord, we just pray that you'd bless them. There's so much that goes on that many of us don't know about. But God, we know that your blessings are with them. And we pray that you'd continue to do so. Pray for the choirs that continue to sing, Lord. Use this service for your glory and honor. It's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Carlos. You may be seated. The choir can be seated as well. We're delighted you're here this morning. Thank you for coming, being part of the service at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. Maybe you're visiting for the first time or the first time in a long time. If that's the case, you are our honored guest today. We're glad you're here. We have a special gift for you, along with a visitor's card and an ink pen. And we ask that you take just a few moments to fill out the visitor's card and drop it in the offering plate when we receive the offering here in just a few moments. Right now, our ushers are in the back. They're making the way to the front. If you are visiting with us today for the first time or the first time in a long time, would you let us recognize you by giving you a gift and a visitor's card and ink pen? Just hold your hand way up high, and our ushers will be with you in just a moment. We have any special guests? Brother Tom, here in the center section, we have some. Brother Joe, thank you. And Brother Terry, right here. Okay, thank you, folks. 
We're glad all of you are here. Thank you for coming and being our guest. And for the regular folks, it's always good to see you. I'll remind you this morning, again, there is a green prayer request card in front of you in the songbook rack. If you have a special prayer request that you'd like for us to mention from the pulpit, all you have to do is write that request in, and uh, toward the end of the service, we'll read those from this pulpit, and we'll have prayer just for the special request that you write in. So be sure and write those in. Drop them in the offering plate as well here in just a few moments. But right now, the choir is going to stand and sing for us this morning. I'm standing on the solid rock. Again, let's turn to 130 with them. In times like these. In times like these, you need a Savior. In times like these, you need a
you, Brother Harvey. The ladies are playing. The choir is coming down. What we'd like for you to do is turn around and shake hands with those around you. Fellowship one with the other, if you would, please. Let me thank you for being at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church this morning. I appreciate so much you being here. We have a special guest with us this morning. Take a few minutes and tell us about his work in the Philippines. Dr. Ed Lorena, if you'll come, Brother Ed, and do that for us now, we'd appreciate you can introduce your wife and guest as well. God bless you, sir. Good morning. Good morning. It's uh, my privilege to be in your church today. I enjoy the uh, teaching in Sunday school of uh, Pastor. And uh, I'm Ed Lorena uh, from the Philippines. My uh, wife is Delia. Would you stand up, please? And I have a friend here from uh, uh, Temple Baptist Church, Barry James in Zinker. And he is the, inter the director of international ministry of Temple Baptist Church. I uh, got saved in 1970. And... Uh, uh, you know, Dr. Lee Robertson, he sent a missionary in the Philippines. And my father-in-law got saved. And my father-in-law won a man to the Lord. And that man won me to the Lord. So I am a great grandson of Dr. Lee Robertson in the faith. You know, I met him and I told him about it. Boy, he hugged me and gave me seven books. <laughs> That's great. And uh, I surrendered my life in 1973. I studied in Bible College in the Philippines. And uh, I was graduating when I got married. And while I was in the school, about 10 miles away from the school, we, for a year we organized it unto local church. And then 23 years ago, we started this church of south of Manila, first city out of Manila. So we started work there from nothing. We uh, moved there and I did spend two, two weeks knocking on doors, inviting people. I have that accordion and uh, the visual of uh, 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 the visual, the heart of man. And uh, I play the accordion and the children will come and even the adults. And I preach to them and I invite them to come for our first service. And God gave us 42 in our first service and three got saved now by the by the grace of god we average 2200 every sunday and uh, last february 18 was our 22nd anniversary our goal is 7000 god gave us 7344 4322 first time visitors and more than 3000 got saved and uh, I said, it's, it's a Pentecost Sunday. And uh, we, we have about, I think about uh, less than 100 baptized. Last year, God gave us about six, 1622, 1622 baptism. Amen. And uh, the ministry that we have, number one is soul winning, soul winning. 
Wherever we go, we win Seoul country. We, in 22 years, we had 25 organized church out of our church. And we have 50 new mission work. We have a age, Baptist Heritage Bible College, but we're going to make it Crown College of Asia. And uh, we have 234 students. We have over 200 graduates. And uh, we send missionaries not only in the Philippines, but we have a work in Taiwan, Saudi Arabia, and we have work in Filipino community. We started a church in San Diego, California, and also in, uh, in uh, LA, San Fernando Valley. And one of our dreams, not only uh, to start a, a, a church, churches here in America in a Filipino community. Amen. Would you imagine that in California we have 1.4 million Filipinos? All over America we have more than 4 million Filipinos. And uh, we, uh, that's, that's one of my dreams. Th there are about five cities in California that the mayors are Filipinos. If God put them as the mayor, God can build a church there. And uh, please pray for us. We have also a, uh, uh, an orphanage. Uh, we have a, children, a street children ministry. We have a jail ministry. You know, we can, and bus terminal. We have more liberty. We have more freedom that you have here. And uh, we have also a, 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 a deaf and mute ministry. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm excited. You know, after the service, I met this uh, uh, deaf and mute. And the only sign I know is amen. <laughs> That's it. Amen. <laughs> and we have a deaf camp every year. And we have a free medical and dental mission. We, uh, we, we bring the, uh, the, uh, the people from different places to our church. And uh, we get their name, registration. We register them. And then after that, somebody would witness to them one by one before the consultation. And uh, uh, it, it works. You know, everything we do, the main objective is to win their soul. Amen. And, uh, uh, you know, we need Bibles. I thank God for the ministry that you have. We need Bibles. We don't have a Filipino King James Bible yet. But praise the Lord. English is the second language in our country. Our songbook is English. And it is King James also. <laughs> and our Bible is English. King James Bible only. Amen. And it works. And uh, uh, our main project today is we want to build a dormitory. We don't have dormitory. Our Bibles, uh, Bible students stay in. They sleep on the pews. But they are there not to be an engineer, not to be an architect, not to be a lawyer, but to be a preacher. Amen. My youngest brother is one of the first graduates of our Bible school. He is pastoring in Manila. And he's running about 1,200, 1,300 every Sunday. Most of his members are soldiers. Because they used to have the church inside the base. But the, uh, after the change of administration, they were kicked out from the base. So they started their own. But by the grace of God, they were able to have their own building. And brethren, I, uh, please, I'm going to invite your pastor to come to our church and see the work. I want you to see the work. And Philippines is open door for the gospel. Last uh, January, Pastor Sexton and uh, uh, his members and staff went there. Boy, I send them to different schools, different churches. We have a pastor's college, and uh, we have about uh, 1,000 delegates for our pastor college, and it works. Amen. So I, I said, redeeming the time while the door is open. Amen. While the door is open, help us. I come to America not to raise my support. I believe uh, I'm a pastor, a Filipino pastor. I want my people to support me. But we need the help for our project. Every, uh, every single dime that we raise, we put it in our project. And uh, uh, just like we're, we're planning to buy a campsite. But I'm, my, my concern is to build this dormitory. If we have a dormitory, 
we can have more students. We can have even 500 in our Bible college. And Bible college, could you imagine? We train. Now it's the time. A national trained the nationals. To send the nationals in the countries that Americans are not welcome, but the brown are American, but are, are welcome. And thank God, just like in Vietnam, I've been in Vietnam, I've been in Malaysia. It's a it's a, a Muslim country, but to us we are we are welcome in that uh, uh, country. So we can send more missionaries. My me and my wife we are sold out to preach the gospel. And we are sold out to train nationals to send not only in Asian countries, but all over the world. By the way, we have four children. My eldest daughter is 23 years old. She plays the piano. My son is 21 years old. He is a preacher. He preached uh, last Sunday night. And, you know, our church is done already. We're ahead of uh, 12 hours. They're done already there. When the rapture comes, we'll be ahead of 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, my, uh, I have my uh, adopted daughter We have four children Two by natural birth and two by adoption My adopted daughter is 11 years old She can sing And my after birth And my adopted boy she just, uh, He just left by, her, by his mom In the house of one of our members After 10 days But she did not come back And my member said Pastor do you want to get him I cannot refuse who knows this Matthew? His name is Matthew. Who knows this Matthew become a preacher? Or become the president of the Philippines? <laughs> Amen. So please continue to pray for us. Thank you for the ministry. Uh, help us and pray for our country. And pray for us that we can do more for God until we hear the sound of the trumpet. Thank you and God bless you. Amen. Thank you, James. God bless you. Right. He's going to go upstairs now and speak to our young people. I'd like for our young people to see real live missionaries too, amen? He's going to do that for a few minutes for us. All right, man, if you'll come, we'll take the offering this morning. Brother Leon, come on up and pray for us, would you please? Heavenly Father, we're indeed grateful to you this morning to, to be here. Thank you, Lord, for each one that's come this way. Pray especially, Lord, a blessing upon our visitors. And Father, as we come to this time in the service, we pray that you would bless this offering, that you would make it a good one, that, Lord, that it would be uh, used for your honor and for your glory, and that we'd give because we love you. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Leon. May the Lord bless us as we give this morning.
Thank you, ladies. Coming to sing just before the message by Pastor Walls is Tiffany Melgard, and she's singing, A Warrior is a Child. your Bibles this morning and turn to 2 Corinthians, please, chapter number 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Last week was Policeman's Memorial Week, those who serve in our law enforcement field. I remembered them on Tuesday, the special day that had set aside, but also through the week I've tried to pray for them. If you're in the law enforcement area, and you work for in law enforcement, you're here this morning, I want you to stand up. I'm not going to embarrass you, I just want you to stand up. You do that. I several folks, okay, that do that, and others that are not here that do that. And I want to say God bless you, and thank you, and that you know we pray for you and appreciate you so much. Thank God for a place made safer by people who do that for us. Thank you so much. One more thing, as you've turned to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 
Next Saturday for six and a half hours, I'm going to be on live radio expecting you to call me about helping us with our printing ministry. We need to raise $60,000 to buy the pony. This isn't something I'm going to be riding around. It's a piece of equipment up here that we're going to use that takes us from 400 scriptures an hour to 2,000 an hour in productivity. I expect you to call me. Matter of fact, if you don't call me, and we're Sunday morning, we're coming, I'm sitting in there six and a half hours begging for someone to call me. It's going to be a long Sunday morning, next Sunday morning. I'll warn you ahead of time. It's going to be a long, all right? But please help us if you would. Please do that for us. I would appreciate it so much. If you're able to, I want you to stand with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 11. Paul has just told the, this church at Corinth about something happened to him. That how that, and he saw some revelations of things in the heavens. And after he explains to them that he's a, much as an apostle as anybody else, that he's seen great visions from the Lord, he begins to take, kind of change his way of saying things in verse number 11. I am become a fool in glorying. Ye have compelled me. For I ought to have been commended of you. You should have been saying, Paul, you're an apostle of the Lord. For in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience and signs and wonders and in mighty deeds. You know my life lived among you. For what is it wherein you are inferior to other churches? Except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you. Forgive me this wrong. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, <coughs> unless the Spirit of God helps us, there'll be no help. Unless there's conviction, unless there's comfort, <coughs> unless there's strength, we'll never accomplish anything this hour beneficial. So I do my best to yield to you this time. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Be seated, please. As you can tell from the announcement of our text, Paul is writing a portion of scriptures to those believers at Corinth. Principally at the city of Corinth, we're talking about people who are not Jewish converts, though Paul had many, but were Gentile converts like you and I. Paul had no idea when he came through the Corinth for the first time, he would stop there for a period of time. He was passing through, preaching, people were being saved, and if there was enough there, they started to church. But the Spirit of God spoke to Paul and said, Paul, he said, I have much people here in this city. And he said, 18 months. And during those 18 months, he built the church that we call Corinth. Now, Corinth was a church that grew mightily and grew much. What happened at Corinth, Paul was preaching to the Jews, though, and the Jews began to hate him and despise him. So he turned to the Gentiles. In turn, those Gentiles, there was a Jewish believer who was the leader of the, of the uh, synagogue named Crispus, who believed in the Lord and many others, and Paul baptized a few of them. But I'm setting, a, I'm setting something for you because you've got to get this, or you're not going to get the, the entire, what I want to preach to you this morning about, so bear with me. But Paul said something in Corinth that's very interesting. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 17, he said, Christ sent me not to but to preach the gospel. Let's just leave this one. I'll just use it, okay? All right? Okay. He said, but Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. So if baptism were to save you, would not Paul have thought also God sent him to baptize as well? But he sent him not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. So what had happened at Corinth? The Jews rebelled. There was a time of fighting among them. In the city of Corinth, he became familiar with two people named Aquila and Priscilla. Familiar names to you. He, he knew them there. Within a few years after visiting, Paul is going to realize this is going to be a large congregation of people, and they had many problems in that church. That's why I wrote 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, he's correcting many things in that church. With that in mind, Paul had paid a great price for these people at Corinth. He had given his life to them. He had spent 18 months of his life there. He was hated by the Jewish people, but loved by the Gentiles for the preaching of the word of God. And it should have been the Jewish people and Gentiles there who did not recognize Paul's apostleship because they thought there were some super apostles among them. They didn't think Paul was very good because Paul maybe didn't do a lot of fancy things or a lot of frills. Paul just preached the word. He preached Christ to them. And so what they thought, well, he doesn't do this and he doesn't do that. and He's not a great apostle. So Paul is defending himself before them. 
He says, I saw revelations in Christ I could tell you about, but the Lord won't let me tell you about them. He said, I could brag on scenes. He said, but I'm not going to do that. Now, this church should have been apologizing to Paul, should have commended Paul, but they didn't do it. We see Paul coming to them, though. He says, the only way I treated you different than any other church is I kept you from giving to my ministry. He said, I want you to forgive me for this wrong. I wish that all of us would be more ready to say, forgive me when we do wrong. But Paul isn't asking for something to be forgiven for for something he's done wrong. He's asking to be forgiven for being a burden to them. For not being a burden to them, I should say. No one's ever come to you and said, I'm sorry I wasn't a burden to you. Have they? But mostly our conversation goes like this. Uh, Forgive me if I'm bothering you. Please forgive me for being a burden to you. So what Paul is saying, you would have been better off if I had been a burden to you and made you give to the ministry. I believe, first of all, that work is good for all of us. The Bible says it's good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth. But you believe it's a good thing for young people to work and have duties around the home and learn to work early. So someone said, how, long do you th- how, how young do you think a child will be before he starts working? I'd say probably at least two or three years of age. We start learning to keep his room clean and say, yes, sir, and no, sir, and yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. Now, I know if, if the child advocacy system ever found what I did to my first two children, they'd kill me or try to. But I know when my, when, one of my children, I don't know who it was, if it was Amanda or if it was Travis, said a bad word one day. Well, I did what my mother and father did to me when I said a bad word. What, what did your parents do to you? What did they do? I wash your mouth out with soap. It's exactly what you do. That's what you ought to do today. You go do it. I'll back you up. I'll come visit you. <laughs> That's what you said to me, preacher. I'm behind you. Yeah, way behind, way behind. It's better to learn than to be lazy. It's better to give than to receive all of our lifetime. Paul is doing something here. He's saying to this church, I want you to know that I, I want you to forgive me the wrong of not being burdensome to you. Can you imagine this chief apostle? Can you imagine this man so loved by God and so, if I can use the word, so preeminent in the service of Christ, coming to a church that's weak and has problems with it and saying, I want you to forgive me for a wrong I've done to you. It never hurts for authority to have to apologize. Sometimes it has to. I realize in my latter days, there's things in my life that are liabilities and not assets. So I want to ask you to forgive me for three things this morning. First of all, I want you to forgive me for not expressing my love more to you. I try to do it a lot, but I need to do it more. I believe I need to do that with my wife and my children. Secondly, I want you to forgive me. I'm not going to dwell on these. These are my sins. I dwell on yours. Forgive me for not having the ability to cause this church to grow at any quicker pace or, 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 of ability to grow, advance in numbers. I'm doing all I know to do. All I'm, here's all I know to do is I know to preach and to visit and to preach and to visit and pray. And that's it. That's all I know. I don't know anything else. And that's what I'm going to keep doing until I die. I wrote a book. That I've, I've only printed one copy of it. And everybody that comes to my office, picks it up. And the book says it's about this thick. It says, all I know about pastoring, you open it up and the, and the pages are blank. Because that's all I know. I don't know much. I ask you to forgive me the wrongs. Now, the words Paul used at the end of closing of his life, and I was giving thought to this, and there's just about four or five things I want to mention this morning that I'll never have to ask you to forgive me for. I may have to ask you to forgive me for not making a visit when I said I would because sometimes I forget anymore. I may have to ask you when you come out the door, try to remember when people, uh, there's 300 people walk out the door and somebody says, pray for so-and-so and go visit. So My mind doesn't work as well as it used to. Does yours? I'm talking to you. Somebody go like this. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Jerry, you lead this section, I'll lead this section. We'll get Brother Harley this section. 
I'll never have to apologize to you. Look at how long I live if God gives me a good reason and good sense for preaching to you the King James Version of the Bible. I'll die in good conscience. Others may want something different and others may find something different someplace else, but you'll find here we'll be preaching the KJV 1611. Amen? Amen. Till I go home to be with the Lord. And if I die first and you get another preacher that comes here and preach anything else, I'm going to ask God to come out and let me haunt him and give him the hiccups when he preaches. I mean, we don't preach from the RSV, the good news for a modern man, the new King James, or the HIV. I know what I said. You don't have to ask me for forgiveness for that. Because our Sunday school is going to teach it. Our Sunday morning is going to preach it. The Sunday night is going to preach it. The Wednesday night we're going to preach it. And any other time you come, we're going to preach it. I want to ask you to ask forgiveness for preaching this book. Tyndall and men who died for us to have a copy of the Word of God. Who were so hated by their own generations. And whose bodies were dug up later and, 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 uh, and uh, destroyed. And made mockery of their bodies. Because they dared give us a copy of the Word of God. How shall we take what our forefathers have given us and, and walk it under the foot as if it counted for nothing in this world? We cannot do that. We were given a godly heritage. Let's keep the godly heritage up. But preach, there's many good versions. I have every one of them in my office. I read from every one of them probably. Here's the one we preach from and teach from. Suppose this morning, though, I gave a new convert. I'm going to give a new convert an NIV. I'm going to have him to answer one question for me from the NIV. I'm going to have him to answer for me, who killed Goliath? I'm going to give him the passage of Scripture where it's found. It's, I'm going to read to you from 2 Samuel 21, verse number 9. Here's what the NIV says. In another battle with the Philistines at Gob, Elhanah, son of Jared Ogram, the Bethlehite, killed Goliath. Huh. So I asked this new convert. Who, did, who killed Goliath? Well, he doesn't read the Bible. He doesn't know the Bible. He says Elhanan does. That's what it says. 2 Samuel 21, verse number 19. Oh, let me see. Uh, James and Diane. What's your daughter's names there, both of them? Whitney and Heather? Brittany, Brittany and Heather, right? Brittany and Heather. Do you know who killed Goliath? Who was it? You can speak out to me. David? I see right. How'd you know that? Because the Bible says so. Justin? Where's Justin? Who, who killed Goliath? David. Amanda? Well, how do you children know that? Because the Word of God said so. Hmm? Thank you. When somebody says, well, somebody says, listen, there must be an authority somewhere, folks, where we have no authority. Yeah. Is that not true? Yeah. So don't you get, look at me like a cap looking at a new gate. You just say, thank God our preacher believes the Bible to be the word of God and live with it. Amen. Up in our Christian school, our teachers have been trying to teach the students to respect the word of God. Not to, I mean, to treat it right. We don't worship the Bible. We worship the God of the Bible. And so one little boy was holding his Bible one morning while they were pledging allegiance to the Bible and it fell in the floor. He grabbed it and he said, Oh God, forgive me. I'd rather have them that way than I had a generation that would say, Yea, hath God said. A famous preacher was dying who had thousands of books in his library. And while he was dying, while he was dying, he said to one of his people that were there, said, bring me the book. They said, you've got several thousand books. He said, there's only one the book. Bring me the Bible. I could have preached more perhaps on hell. I could have preached more perhaps on separation, where we ought to live godly separated lives to the Lord. But I'm not shunned to declare unto you the whole counsel of God. I'll never have to ask you to forgive me preaching the Bible to you. Secondly, I'll never have to forgive you for ask you to forgive me for preaching the new birth. 
See, you were born physically. As in Adam, all have sinned. As in Adam, all die. The Bible says that, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. That's a birth we preach about. We preach that every one of us were born wrong because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know how many sinners are in this room? All have sinned. That's the natural birth. I believe the total depravity of man, he can't save himself just by being good. He can't save himself by fanning a fire. He's totally depraved, lost without God. From the head of his hair, top of his head, to the bottom of his feet. And I preached to you the virgin birth. I believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. I believe that Mary never knew a man unless she conceived Jesus Christ. After he was born, I don't believe she didn't know a man. I don't believe that Joseph had relationships after Christ was born. Virgin. That good thing which is formed to be shall be of the Holy Ghost. That shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. He shall name him Jesus, for he shall save his people from his sin. We believe in the virgin birth of the Son of God, and without apology, I'll never have to ask you to forgive me for saying anything different than that. But this third birth also, I'll never have to ask you to forgive me for us for preaching the new birth. You must be born again. Being born again, 1 Peter 1, 23, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Hope you never tire of this story because I'll tell it to the day I die. George Whitfield preached 3,000 times on you must be born again. And someone said, Mr. Whitfield, Whit Whit Whitfield, why have you preached 3,000 times on you must be born again? And George Whitfield said, because you must be born again. The birth. I've not wronged you by preaching to you about the book or the birth. Thirdly, I've not wronged you by preaching about the blood of Jesus Christ to atone for sin. Revelation 1, 5, and him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Hebrews 9 says in verses 11 through 12 that he was not with the bloods of goats or other animals to enter the holy place, but once has he entered with his own blood in the presence of the Father and made eternal redemption for you and I. Help me sing a song this morning. Help me now. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. There's still power in the blood. There's no power in the tub, there's power in the blood. There's no power in church membership, but there's power in the blood. There's no power in communion to save, but there's power in the blood. There's no power in the preacher to save, but there's power in the blood. There's no power in the Pope to save you, but thank God there's still power in the blood. There's no power in the faith healer. There's power in the blood. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, whew, God's Son, continually cleanses us from all sins. Cleanses us from sin. I'll have to ask you to follow, I'll say I'm sorry for preaching about the book, the birth, the blood, and Fourth, I'll have to ask you to ever forgive me for preaching about the blessed hope. I know Jesus Christ hasn't come yet, but I know he's going to. How do you know? Well, he promised. He just got a habit of keeping his promises. Never broken a one. Looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, Titus 2.13 says. And that's what we're looking for. Some golden daybreak, Jesus will come. The one who said, I will come, will come and will not tarry. It's going to happen. See, we're not looking for the signs, folks. We're looking for the sun. Amen. 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 So I've not wronged you by preaching to you the fact of the blessed hope of the Lord Jesus. Fifthly, I've not wronged you or have to ask you to forgive me for preaching that you ought to have a burden for souls. I'm glad we support missionaries. We have missionary schedule. You wouldn't believe so many missionary schedule. We support over 180 missionaries. As a matter of fact, this month we'll add 10 additional ones that we voted on when we start paying them in May. So we'll have close to 190 missionaries. I'm glad for that. I'm glad that you got a burden to support missionaries. 
I'm glad you've got a burden to print scriptures and get them somewhere around the world. The sun never sets on the ministry about Pisgah Baptist Church. I'm glad for that. I'm glad that you got a burden to give people tracks. <laughs> I was at a hospital in Knoxville the other day, and I just have a habit of carrying tracks with me, and whenever I go somewhere, I'll just lay one down. I lay them down on tables and in bathrooms, and I was in there washing my hands, looked over, and go put a track down. There was one already there, just like this one. I know who put it there. Bill Lankford, his child's in the hospital, and Bill's always putting tracks somewhere. I will not have to ask you to forgive me for having a burden for souls. There's a ministry I ran across the other day that I hope our church can help. I don't know what you think about this. Do you know there's three million truckers on the road? Three million people drive trucks. Over here in Knoxville is a big place, the uh, plaza on Watts Road. You, who, you know what I'm talking about? How many know what I'm talking about? Pe the Petro, is that what it is? Petro? I don't go there, HB, I didn't know. So, oh. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, that man has agreed to let a transfer truck come in there and sit and make a permanent chapel there. And um, husband and wife and their children will go live in that part of the 18-wheeler uh, that will make a chapel, uh, make a home for them to live. And they'll be open seven days a week to preach the gospel to those people that come through there. I won't be a part of that. I want to give some money to it and I want to give some Bibles to them and I want to go over and preach every once in a while too. Amen? A burden for souls. I've not been wrong by asking you to give to the print shop. By the way, you're cheating yourself out of one of the greatest blessings of life when you don't learn to give. God, matter of fact, promised you, said, I'll open the windows of heaven and I'll pour out a blessing upon you and have room to receive. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not getting something out of you. I'm getting something for you. But I tell you what, the day will be a blessed day when you learn in your life to tithe, that's 10% of your income, and give an offering to the Lord's work. It'll be a blessed day in your life. I cannot tell you the way God has met my need through these years, through my wife and I. Simply, I started when I was 13 years of age tithing when I had a paper route. I started tithing. And ever since that day, I've learned just to tithe and to give to God's work. And they've been able to do so. And I won't tell you, there's a blessing in doing it. So I have not wronged you by encouraging you to give. Sixthly, and I have one more. <clears throat> I don't want to ever ask you to forgive me for asking you to be saved today. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation, 2 Corinthians 6, 2. It's not the Lord's will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. I'm not to ever say I'm, I, I'm wrong or you forgive me for asking you to be saved today. But someone said, but why? Because today is the day of salvation. You hear there's people here this built morning lost without God. I prayed for you for years. And others have prayed for you. Some listen to my means of television. I couldn't help but think this morning, and you, if you know who I'm talking about, you just keep it to yourself. There's a man very ill this morning, and very ill the last few days, and these last 12 years plus, I've pleaded with him, and I've begged with him. I've gone before him and got on my hands and knees. When he was so heavy on my heart, and shed tears in front of him. After a Sunday morning service here, I guess a couple of years ago, he was still on my heart. I couldn't eat. And I drove down to his house. Got in his living room, and on my hands and knees, asked him to trust Christ. He prayed with me that day and said he got saved. He never, he's never made it public at church. Now, if he did or if he didn't, I don't know. But if he had to meet God today, and I had to meet God today. I wouldn't have to apologize. I haven't tried to get me to get saved today. <clears throat> I think it was Friday. It may have been Friday. I don't know. 
I walked in the hospital room. I was going to go some bed to bed visitation. Unusually, just just happened this way. And I said the first, I was, I'm going down the hallway. I said, I always, I always tell God, I said, God, the first door that's open, I'm going to go in. I don't care who's in there, I'm going in. And sure enough, came first door open, walked in. Here was a nurse helping a man with some vein, some medicine in his vein. And I walked in, and he said, "You're the preacher, aren't you?" And I said, "Yes, sir." He said, "I attended a funeral that you preached a few weeks ago of someone." And I said, okay. I said, when the nurse gets through, I'll be glad to talk with you. And after a few minutes when she had left, he told me he wasn't for sure if he died to go to heaven. And I told him the wonderful story of love. Wake the immortal strands. Angels. With rapture announce it. Shepherds with wonder receive it. Oh, sinner, won't you believe it? Wonderful story of love. A man named Robert Johnson bowed his head, trusted Christ in his room. I know. I, I, I'm crazy. I know that. I know what folks think sometimes. He's going, they're going you, know what, you know what they think? I can clear a room, but I can go in. And when they come in, everybody says, Here's the preacher. It's like a warning. <laughs> because I'm going to ask you a question if I ever get around you. I'm going to ask you about your soul. I'm sorry, I've got to quit. John Vassar had such a burden for souls. God help us to get one. But John Vassar was always witnessing everybody he saw. One day some ladies were in the shop and they saw this sophisticated lady walking down the street and saw John Vassar walking down the street too. And uh, they said, oh no, I hope she doesn't run into John Vassar. And sure enough, she and John Vassar met on the street and he talked to her for a few minutes and he left and she stood there crying. And some of the ladies walked out and said, uh, did John Vassar offend you? Did he offend you by saying something about what you was wearing or how you were dressed? Said, no, said, he asked me about my soul. They said, why didn't you tell him it was none of his business? And she said, because if you'd looked into his eyes, you thought it was his business. And then lastly, this morning, number seven or eight, whatever it is, I'm going to learn to count next year when I go to school. I want to ask, ask forgiveness for trying to tell you that you can restore your life. I'm glad to announce again this morning that God is a God of a second chance. Somebody ought to shout. Somebody ought to say amen. Somebody ought to say glory to God. Hallelujah. And everything else that goes with it. To the preacher, you preach on. You tell the truth. Amen. Glory to God. Preach amen. on. <laughs> amen. I can't believe anything Willard can, if we can ever did anything uh, on time, but he finally did. <laughs> I won't ever ask you the wrong way to tell you you can get a fresh start with God. Amen. Never have to apologize to you for saying when you failed, you can get up. Or if you fainted, you can go on. You can make it with your families. You can make it with your heartaches. Because you can cast all your burden upon the Lord. And he shall sustain you. He's the healer of broken hearts. He's the mender of broken dreams. He's the helper of the helpless. Don't give up on God. Hmm? While our heads are about our eyes are closed. I'll ask
ask you just a couple of questions this morning. Let me quickly raise a hand and say, Pastor, I know that I'm saved. I'm glad Jesus lives in my heart. Would you raise your hand? I know that I'm saved. Isn't it good to know the Lord? God's people said what? Now across this room, not every hand was raised. I didn't do that to trick you or to trap you. But if by doing that it made you see you're near the Lord Jesus, it's worth it. But if you're here and you cannot raise your hand, you know you're saved. But you'd like to join the ranks of the saved before you leave this building. I'm not going to wrong you by asking you to make that decision now. And I'm going to ask you right where you're seated to pray a prayer with me. If there's a want to in your heart to know Christ, I want you to pray this prayer with me right at your seat. Here's the prayer, dear Lord. I know that I'm a sinner. I want you to forgive me of my sins and come in my heart and save me. I believe you died for me and you rose again. I trust you now to save me. Now, while our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, no one's looking around out of respect for everyone else now. How many quickly raise a hand and say, Pastor, thank you for today and encouraging me to trust Christ. And you'd raise a hand and say, Pastor, today I trusted Christ to say, I prayed that prayer with you. I trusted Christ here at my seat to save me. Would you raise your hand where I can see it? Put it up and right back down quickly. Quickly. There's some folks that needed to. I can't make you do it. Someone quickly. Put your hand where I can see it. I'll ask one more time, someone quickly. You did not raise your hand, you know you're saved, but right now, Pastor, I prayed that prayer with you and I trusted Christ to save me. I'll ask one more time. You need to do that today? Father, please deal with every heart. Please do what needs to be done, I pray, in hearts and in lives, in Jesus' name. Would you come this morning as a believer and say, God, please give me a burden for souls? Would you come today and ask God to help you to have a better love for the book? Would you do that this morning as a child of God? I'll come and pray for someone. You need to come be saved. I'm here to meet with you and pray with you. They're going to play this verse of invitation. Verse. They're going to play. What number is it we're going to sing, Brother Harvey? 19. Page number 19. Let's stand together and sing page number 19. We'll do that. You need to come. You come on. Page number 19. You come on. <clears throat> there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty stain lose all their guilty stain lose all their guilty stain and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty stain they're playing for us on the instruments our heads are about our eyes are closed you know if God spoke to your heart or not. And it sure is a foolish thing for you not to respond. Listen to me. I can't convince you of anything. If the Holy Spirit's convinced you of something, you ought to do something about it. I'm talking to a man and woman that's lost. A young person that's lost. You ought to trust Christ this time. I'm talking to some Christians that are praying about something in your heart and your life. I can't make you do that, but you ought to do something about it. There's people in this room, individuals in this room that you've been saved. Maybe you got saved in my office. Maybe you got saved at home or on the job or in your car or somewhere. You trusted Christ. I'm encouraging you this morning, this very hour, to make that public that you got saved. You need to do that. This is the church. You'll be a part of this church family. You need to get baptized. Set a time to get baptized. Are you going to get baptized this morning? I want you to come. We're not going to delay. We're not going to keep you. You know what you ought to do. There are several people that uh, those things I mentioned, several people ought to do those things. I can't make you do them. You ought to do them. We're going to sing the second verse of page number 19. Get you a book. Sing with us. You come. This will be the final verse. Unless someone comes. The dying thing rejoice to sing that fountain in his day. 
you come on now. And there may I come on now. Come on now. Why shall my sins away? Do it now. I know we have some people going to get baptized tonight, so we'll do that tonight. But you go ahead and be seated, please. I want all of our seniors, graduated, those that graduated from either high school or college or uh, this, this year, I want you to come forward, please, and I want you to give us your name and the school you graduated from and how much it cost your parents. All right, if you'll come. So we take up an offering. If you'll just come now, come on. Let's go. There's several here. I'm not sure how many here, but come on, we'll do that. Okay. All right. Come out up here. Uh, I've got a, a gift we want to give you. Give us your name. Again. Uh, Rachel Poland from Oliver Springs High School. Hey. Rachel, congratulations. Thanks. God bless you. Hey. I'm glad you did that. All righty. Come on. Come on, Adam, you can be next. I'm Adam Stevenson. I graduated from Harriman High School. God bless you, Adam. Good to see you, son. After one is gone, the next one can come. <laughs> My name is Ashley Edwards, and I graduated from Oliver Springs High School. My name is Amy Bonifacius, and I'm graduating from Oliver Springs High School. All right. God bless you. That's good. I'm Maggie Lawson, and I'm graduating from Oliver Springs High School. Amen. Good. My name is Leah Walls, and I graduate Tuesday from Oliver Springs High School. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm Andrew Walls, and I graduate. What's your name? I didn't hear you. Uh, Andrew Walls, and I graduate from Virginia Intermont College. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Five years he put that in there. <laughs> Jess Raby, Olive Springs High School. Okay. <laughs> I'm Jackie Kilgore, and I'm graduating from Olive Springs High School. Amen. God bless you. Good to see you. One more here. I'm Sherry Brocious from Oliver Springs High School. Great. Let's give them a good hand, all right? That's wonderful, isn't it? It's a busy day today. Brother Ed, do uh, you have any of your prayer cards or anything with you that you can have for people as they leave? Do you have some prayer cards with you? Okay. That's okay. Uh, be sure and shake hands with him as you leave today. Tell Brother Ed we're glad that he is here. Let's do this this morning. One thing that I like about his school there, it's a tuition free. Three grandkids going to get baptized this morning too. Let's have her family stand up while they take, your family stand up here. Come watch her get baptized this morning. All the folks come here. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. That's a blessing, isn't it? got to make you happy.
doing good. When I get 78, hope I can move. If I get 78, <laughs> amen. Amen. That's what she thought too. That's what she thought too. Okay, got a couple, got a few more here. We're gonna take care. Thank you, Keith. Appreciate you helping me. Amen. I'm glad she, she's afraid of water too, so took a lot of extra grace. <laughs> I told her I was going to hold her under and sing two verses of Amazing Grace. <laughs> is this Victoria? Mm -hmm. This is her granddaughter, Victoria Maddox. Major and Benita's daughter. Victoria, we're glad you've been saved. We love you and appreciate you, Lord, and I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism. Reason to walk, newness of life. God bless you. That's good. That's good, amen. That's good. This is her granddaughter and the sister of Victoria. This is Rachel. I, this is red on the head one, the other one's red on the head two. That's what I call you, isn't it? <laughs> we appreciate them. And Rachel, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Mary with Christ in baptism. There's in the walk. You just alive. God bless you, honey. That's good. That's good. is Libby Justice, Stanley and Faye's daughter, and uh, a lot of her family is here today. They come here regularly. But I couldn't help but think of how uh, proud you grandparents would be. And Libby, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Mary with Christ in baptism, there's in the wall, in the of life. God bless you. That's good, isn't it? Mrs. Howard, you had part in this too, didn't you? <laughs> if I need this, uh, mother sitting here, that's those other two girls are her granddaughters too. Got a lot of family here, that's good. Your first name? Melissa. This is Melissa Robbins, Hubert and Margaret's daughter, and also. Uh, Mrs. Maddox's granddaughter. I'm glad you got saved here a few weeks ago on a Sunday morning. I'm grateful she's getting baptized. We baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism. Risen to walk. In the of life. God bless you. Amen. That's good, isn't it? We got some more. church this morning. Julie got saved several months ago in our junior church program. Julie, you're special to us. The Lord loves you, and I'm glad you're doing this. And Julie, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Married with Christ in baptism. Risen to walk in unison of life. You okay? Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay. Brother Hart, if you'll give me a song, I'll come out and we'll have a child dedication. We saved Amazing Grace till after a preacher got through baptizing, so. 256.
want to thank each of you for your prayers and the cards that you sent. My grandmother went to be with the Lord here a couple of weeks ago. You don't know how much I enjoyed going home at evening, going to the mailbox and finding a card from some of our church family and it encouraged me and I want you to know I appreciate it very much. I didn't know that type of ministry and the effect that it had until just recently and I want to th thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you Keith. We have something we need to do this morning. All we're going to do is we'll have a prayer of dedication for the children that are going to be dedicated to the Lord this morning. And what I'd like for you to do if you would in just a moment I'd like for you to Bring your child with you toward the front here. I'm going to let you come up here and just give your name and the name of the child being dedicated. And then we're going to have a prayer of dedication for all the children at one time. We're going to do that. And I have a verse of scripture, just a little comment I want to make to you. So if you're going to dedicate your children this morning, just come up this way. Come toward the front here. We have some children going to be dedicated this morning. There's some from the back and some coming in different places. Bring them on up here and we'll just uh, we'll, we'll put up with all the crying and everything. Come on. This is a sign of a good church when they cry and get some kids here. Okay, come on up. Just, just up over here, Debbie, if you would. After, you, after you've given the, your name and the children's name, after you do that, just go, if you would, and be seated on the front here. After you do that, go sit, go sit somewhere on the front. Okay, it's not to, to embarrass you. It's just so we can know who these kids are. All of them, if you would. So after you've given your name and your child's name, then you can go over and be seated on the front. Okay, just speak right into here. Make sure we got this on camera too. Okay, all right. Okay, Debbie. I'm Debbie Wiley, and this is Savannah Janae. Savannah Janae, okay. I'm Jennifer Moore, and this is Chelsea Deanne Moore. Okay. Hi, I'm Mike Ledoux. It's my wife, Melissa, our daughter, Michelle, and Cameron. Hi, I'm Alan Sewell. This is my wife, Donna, and my daughter, Kayla Renee. Amen. Kind of I'm Linda Darty, and this is Brittany. I'm Angela Coker, and this is Jacob Lee. Okay. I'm Brian Lawson. This is my wife, Dina, and my little girl, Kayla Beth. I'm Rick Lowe, this is my daughter Ashley, my wife Cheryl, our son Darren. Amen. John and Donetta Harvey, and this is Kate and Elizabeth. I'm Rebecca Holt, and this is my son Peter Sheldon Holt. <laughs> okay. Let me just say a few things to you all. That actually child dedication is parent dedication. Where it's the parents that give themselves to see that their children are taught right and are cared for. There's a verse of scripture the Lord gave me this week as I was reading. Let me just read it to you, then we'll have a prayer. It's Lamentations chapter 2, verse 20. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 20. Would you believe that's not the right scripture reference? Okay, I'm going to tell you what it should have said. It talks about lifting up of our hands for our children. In other words, praying to the Lord for our children, lifting up our hands and watching over. Verse 19 it is, Arise, cry out in the night, in the beginning of the watches, pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger at the top of every street. So the idea is, parents, of praying for your children and giving yourself to those children. If you would, just uh, take your wife by the hand. If she's there, you have a partner there with you. And take your children, and you just hold them there for a minute. And let me have a prayer of dedication. Father, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the children we hear in the sanctuary this morning. Jesus said of them, Suffer, little children, to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for parents that are willing to give their children to you, that their children can hopefully serve you and honor you with their lives. 
Give wisdom to the parents and guardians. Give them help and give them grace and give them strength. And Father, I pray when these children come to the age of accountability, they'll want to come to know Christ and that we ourselves would have the privilege of seeing them come to know Christ and seeing them baptized as others have been baptized this morning. We dedicate ourselves to be a better preacher for their cause. Our church should dedicate ourselves to giving ourselves to more to these and these parents dedicating themselves to raising their children properly and rightly. Help us, I pray now, to do so. And may your blessings be upon these families. In Jesus' name I pray and for his sake I pray. Amen. Be sure and fill out a card. If you've not filled out one, be sure and get a card. Isaiah, does everybody have a card here as far as you know? Here we have card and pen. If you don't have one, fill it out. Fill out a card for each child. Do that for us. They're okay. They're not bothering anything. They're fine. I've got five. <clears throat> They're fine. They're fine. Okay. All right. Isn't this wonderful now? we got more to do here. If y'all let me have that side over there, Donna, you and uh, Tommy. Let Miss Maddox just sit over there somewhere. And we're going to line everybody up. Any of her family wants to sit up here and sit with you, can't understand with her if any of you want to, we're going to come by and shake hands with her. She can stay seated. She won't have to sit up the whole time. Might be too hard on her. We're going to come by and shake hands with all these folks. Just sit over there, Julie, if you want to. Debbie, if you want to go with us and you join the church, you can sit right here. Julie, this right here is fine, honey. And Debbie, why don't you go over there with them if you want to on that side, if you would. And we'll shake hands there. All of God's people said? Amen. It's been a good day, hasn't it? It's been a good day. Ken, folks here and everything else, that's good. We want to come by and shake hands with these folks today and rejoice with them because of what God has done. Let's stand to our feet. Brother Harvey, why don't you come with thanksgiving to the Lord for what he's done for us and have prayer for us. Father, we are grateful for your blessings upon us today and for the things that our eyes have seen and our ears have heard, for the singing, for the preaching, for the fellowship, for those who have been saved and acknowledged it in our service this morning, for those who have followed in believers' baptism. Lord, we're grateful these are blessings from heaven to us and to these folks who have participated. We thank you for the children who have been dedicated to thee today and for the parents who are here to make this dedication to thee. We ask your blessings upon these families that you will cause them to be rich in your grace and glory as they raise their children in a Christian home and when they're old enough to teach them the way of salvation. We pray, Father, now that each and every one that's here today meet every need that we all have. Help us to honor you in all that we do. Thank you for our church and our church family and our preacher for Christ's sake. Amen.
me. <laughs> <laughs> you told me you never wore a dress with a bug in these. Oh! <laughs> <laughs>
That's the memo she remembers that. that. Like er, Y'all remember that? It snowed and we couldn't go to memos for Christmas so they brought all my presents down. Good, that was the second grade, it was ugly. We're scary. <laughs> Where's Johnny? <laughs> That's at Memo's house. Yeah. seven vehicles left. There's Memo. Gary, why didn't you stand up straight in that one? <laughs> That's cute. Look like that. Look like your mother.